Welcome back to Virtual Happy Hour, first day of spring edition. So I know a lot of us aren't getting outside today to enjoy the first day of spring. So I wanted to bring spring into your glass for the first sip of spring. I have to thank my friends at Praxis PR and Sipsmith for sending me a bottle of Sipsmith Beautiful London Dry Gin, as well as a copy of their Sip 100 Gin Cocktails with Three Ingredients book. So today's Earl Grey Sour, which we're gonna be making together, comes from this book. It technically has four ingredients if you do choose to use the egg, but this is optional. I'll get into that in a second. This is a super easy drink and hopefully you started off uh, by infusing your London Dry Gin with one Earl Grey tea bag for an hour, letting that steep and then removing the tea bag. So that's what I have here. You see the gin has taken on a beautiful tea color, which we're gonna be using today. I wanted to start off by telling you a little bit about gin. So gin is actually made by redistilling a high proof neutral spirit with botanicals. It always must include juniper, but can also include other botanicals like orange peel, lemon peel, angelica root, coriander, cocoa, and others. So that's why so many gins have such a big different variety of flavors. London Dry, a London dry Gin is one of five different varieties of gin, and it's really the benchmark for all others. So it has a big, bold, aggressive, in-your-face flavor that's really big on that juniper and notes of citrus, which is why it stands up so well to the infusion with the Earl Grey tea. Earl Grey tea gets its distinctive flavor and scent from something called bergamot oil. Bergamot is actually a kind of inedible citrus fruit. It's the size of an orange, but the color of the lime, and it's mainly used for the extraction of its oil, which is used in the production of Earl Grey tea and gives it its distinctive flavor and scent. So because of that big citrus component of the bergamot, it plays really nicely with a London dry style gin like Sipsmith. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started in making the cocktail. We're gonna be using two ounces of our Earl Grey infused London dry style gin. So that's one and two. And then we're gonna add one ounce of simple syrup. If you'd like it to be a little bit less sweet, go ahead and cut this back to three quarters of an ounce. And now we're gonna use a full ounce of lemon juice. Again, really leaning into the citrus profiles in the gin and also from the bergamot oil that's in the Earl Grey tea. So if you're vegan or you don't want to use an egg, because I know eggs are kind of in, in short supply right now at a lot of grocery stores, go ahead and use chickpea brine, which is also known as aquafaba. And that's gonna froth up in the same way that an egg white will. We're only gonna do one shake of this cocktail, what's called a wet shake, because we're using ice. But if you're using aquafaba in place of an egg, do a dry shake first without ice and then you're gonna add a few cubes of ice to agitate and chill the drink and do another wet shake and then strain. So I just like to get the egg white in, just transferring the yolk from shell to shell. There we go. And now I'm gonna add ice to our shaker. If you don't have a shaker, you could try using a really large mason jar with the lid on, obviously, and giving it a good firm shake. You wanna shake this for probably 20 or 30 seconds to make sure you get that nice froth on the egg white. And really break it up and make sure it's fully integrated into the drink. falling all over the place. Just trying to show off my shoulders, guys. There we go. So there's not really an art to shaking cocktails. A lot of bartenders like to use a figure eight motion, kind of down, up, back, front. So as you can see, the egg white is gonna give us a really nice 
velvety texture on the top of the drink and really make for a really nice mouthfeel. There we go. There you have it. We have the Earl Grey Sour. Cheers, guys. Mm -hmm.